open, yeah. Heaven's open, yeah. Heaven's open, heaven's open, heaven's open, heaven's open, yeah. Heaven, heaven's open. Come on, I feel the heavens opening. Heaven's open, heaven's open, heaven's open. Come on, the heavens are open. Heaven's open, heavens are open. Come on, the heavens are open. Heaven's open, heaven's open. Heavens are open. Heavens open. Yeah, shut up. Heavens open. Yeah. Heavens open. Come on, open the heavens. Heavens open. Yes, glory. Heavens open. Come on, the heavens are opening. Come on, the heavens are open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Yeah, heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Healing is coming. Heavens Deliverance open. is falling. Heavens open. Heavens open. Come on, the heavens are open. Heavens open. Heavens are open. Heavens open. Heavens are open. Heavens open. Come on, open the heavens this morning, heavens God. We thank you that the heavens, heavens are open, open over us. That we're living heavens up under an open heaven. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open, heavens open. Come on, the heavens are open. Heavens open. The heavens are open. Heavens open. Come on, the heavens are open. Heavens open, heavens open. Yeah, heavens open, heavens open, heavens open, heavens open. That's it. Open the heavens. Heavens open. Come on, they're opening up. Heavens open. Come on, just for a few more seconds. Heavens open the heavens. Hallelujah. Heavens open. Hallelujah. Heavens open. Open the heavens. Heavens open. Heavens open. Come on, the heavens are open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Heavens open. Come on, the heavens are opening. Heavens open, heavens open. Come on, right where you are, just worship him. Come on, just worship him, worship him. The heavens are open over you right now. The heavens are open for you right now. The heavens are open over you right now. The heavens are open for you right now. Reba Sokata, Man Sokai. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on, welcome Impact Church, Goldsboro. Welcome, Impact Church Global. The heavens are open. The atmosphere shift now. Chains be broken. Break now. Holy Spirit, come down. Heavens open. Heavens open. Atmosphere. If now let chains be broken, break now, Holy Spirit, uh, come down, let the heavens open, heavens open, come on, decree this, atmosphere, wherever you are, shift now, let every change, chains be broken, break now, break now, Holy Spirit, Come down. Come down. Let the heavens be open. Heaven open. Let the heavens Heaven be open. open. Come on, right where you are. Give him a thunderous praise. Come on. The Bible said he inhabits the praises of his people. And so wherever the praises of God, I believe that the heavens open over the praises of God. I believe that the hope in the heavens open where there's a praise. Where there's a praise, there's got to be a breakthrough. There's a portal that opens from heaven when you lift up a praise. Come on, lift up a praise this morning. Right where you are, lift up a praise and open up the heavens over your home. Open up the heavens right where you are in the sanctuary. Open up the heavens with a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Praise, Rabba Sokata. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Chains are broken. Chains are broken. Deliverance is falling. Healing is coming. It's here right now. 
It's here right now. It's here right now. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Glory to the Lamb of God. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We honor you. We bless you. Come on, put your hands together and bless him in this place. Come on, such a sweet presence of God. Healing is here. Deliverance is here. The manifestation of God's glory is here. He is the atmosphere. He is the environment that we seek. He's the environment that we live for and we live in. He is the desire of our hearts. He is the reward of our worship. Come on, give him your worship. Give him your worship. Give him your worship. We bless the name of the Lord. The Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. We honor him. We love him. We praise him. We worship him. Welcome Impact Church Goldsboro, Impact Church Global. Come on, it's time to open the heavens. Woo! Shata, manso. Glory to the Lamb of God. I feel the glory of the Lord in this place. I feel the glory of the Lord being released over our homes. I feel the glory of the Lord being released over our city, in our nation. Hell is being pushed back. Hell is being pushed back. Hell is being defeated right now. Hell is being defeated right now. Hallelujah. Jesus is lifted right now. The name of Jesus be lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Let the name of Jesus be lifted high in this place. Reban Sokata. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, you are. The, come on, give him a praise. Come on, the heavens are open, so your mouth ought to be open with the heavens. Come on, heaven it open, so your mouth, your praise, your praise, your praise, your praise. Your praise get the attention of heaven. Your praise get the attention of heaven. Come on, if the heavens are open over you, if the heaven is open for you, then your mouth ought to be open for heaven. Come on, give God the glory. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you in this place, oh God. For you alone are worthy. 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 Alone are worthy of our praise. Hadamasokata. Rebasoka, we decree and declare the glory of the Lord. We decree and declare the glory of the Lord. We declare your glory in this place, oh God. We declare your power in this place, your power, your glory, your power, your healing. Oh, that's it. Give him a praise. Rababa sokatata, rebaba ne sekete, reban sokatayo. Father, your glory fills this place. Your glory fills our heart. We give you our worship. We give you our worship. We give you our worship. Come on, hell is defeated this morning. No weapon formed against you is able to prosper. And every tongue that has risen up against you is being condemned right now. We break the power of witchcraft over you. We break the power.
power of every demonic force that has been working in and over our lives and we decree and declare that the deliverance and the healing power of God is going forth right now in the name of Jesus salvation is nigh us salvation is nigh you even in your mouth and as we release it out of our mouth today healing and deliverance we release salvation we release deliverance we release the power of God we have authority over all unclean spirits and we cast down every demonic force we break the power of every principalic power that has been working in our region over our lives over our home and we decree and declare that the glory of God is bringing deliverance and healing to his people that the glory of God is freeing people from witchcraft and chains are being broken cycles of poverty and cycles of sickness and cycles of bondage is being broken deliverance is flowing right now even from the heavens, deliverance is flowing. Chains are being broken. Habits are being broken. Reba Hey, in the name of Jesus. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Spells are being broken right now. Spells are being broken right now. Witches are getting choked up right now. They can't even call your name anymore. They can't even mention your name. They can't even call your address. God is taking out of the mouth of witches and warlocks. Your name is being removed. Shatayah from spells and curses are being broken right now. Shemanso Rebakando Satai. Ooh, we silence the mouths of witches. Hey, we break curses and we break spells. Conjurations, we call it off in the name of Jesus. Fall to the ground and die right now. You have no power over us. We stand delivered. We stand free. We break curses off of businesses. We break curses off of homes. We break curses off of families. Curses are falling off of bloodlines right now. In the name of Jesus. And we release the blessing of God. We release the blessing of Abraham. We release the inheritance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For we are joint heirs with Jesus. And we stand in our authority. And we claim our inheritance today. Here in the name of Jesus, somebody ought to give him praise. I prophesy that as you praise him, deliverance is going to hit your heart. Deliverance is going to hit your home. Come on, as you praise him, you don't have to do anything. He's already done it. He's already done it. Just receive. Come in agreement with your deliverance. Come in agreement with your healing. Come in agreement with your victory. I hear the Lord saying, I hear the Lord saying that even now as chains and spells and curses are being broken, some of you have experienced struggles and it's like you've done everything right but you have not been able to advance. God says because even though you have authority and you have, yes, the victory in Jesus' name, there have been things that have been working against you and it's been a struggle and it's been a strain but God says even now I'm anointing you to advance forward because I'm breaking curses and I'm breaking spells, even things that have been released against you, things that have been adversely spoken against you. Some of you have had people say things adversely against you and people have believed lies and have believed certain things and God says I'm removing them right now. God says I can tear down the lies that the enemy have spoken against you and right now they're being torn down. Right now lies are vanishing the minds and the memories of people and God says I'm giving you grace and I'm giving you space to advance right now with the name of Jesus. I prophesy that businesses will go forward. I decree and declare that even in the next 30 to 90 days you will begin to see God advancing even in your business. Your business shall increase. Him on Sotaya. Your clients will increase. Him Sotaya. Your business shall experience prosperity because God is breaking curses and removing strongholds. He's breaking off of you every hindering spirit. Hey, Mandorosa. Every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus. And right now, every witch that has worked witchcraft against you, Shandosiah is returning to him or to her. Rebanso. Somebody give him praise. We 
reverse every curse with the blessing of God. Come on, give him praise. Hell is defeated. Hell is defeated. Hell is defeated. Hell is defeated. And we have the victory. We have the victory. We have the victory. We have the victory. You don't have to do anything. Just receive it. Come on, all you got to do is praise him for it. Come on, all you got to do is praise him for it. You ain't got to do nothing. Come on, you ain't got to work for victory. You ain't got to work for deliverance. Come on, he's the deliverer. He is the deliverer. Hey, mando satan. Come on, come in agreement with your deliverance. You ain't got to work for deliverance. Just receive it. Just receive it. Come on, strongholds are being broken off of the minds of God's people. I decree and declare deliverance today in the name of Jesus. He is our deliverer. And he has delivered us from the curse of the enemy. From the curse of the law. From the curse of generational curses. From the curse of social and society curses. Chains are being broken. Mansoka nesayo. And deliverance is falling. Come on, if you believe in it and you receive it, come on. Come on, everybody can't handle deliverance, but I believe in deliverance. Come on, I need deliverance. I receive deliverance. I come in agreement with deliverance. Come on, you can read your Bible, but you still need to receive deliverance. Come on, you still need to receive the ministry of Jesus Christ. He came that we might be delivered. He saved you and he saved us. Now he wants to deliver us and then he wants to prosper us. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. Then he wants to prosper you. Woo! We give him praise. We give him praise. Mansokata. The atmosphere has shifted over your life today. I decree and declare it. Come on, the glory of God. We welcome you again to Impact Church Goldsboro. You stepped into and you tuned into a space of deliverance. You've tuned into a space of deliverance. I believe the heavens are open for us. I believe that God is pouring out his blessings. He's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And this morning, God is renewing. I feel a spirit of renewing, a spirit of refreshing. I, I decree and declare that God is restoring and refreshing and renewing your spirit. He's renewing your spirit. I, sp I feel and sense a spirit of revitalization. God is revitalizing and he is restoring. I prophesy that the joy of your salvation shall return. Some of you have been fatigued and the enemy has just worn you out. But today the Lord restores you. The Lord replenishes you. The Lord renews you. The Lord refreshes you. That the Lord even now is releasing a fresh wind over you. Wind of the Holy Spirit is being released over you. A fresh pouring of his oil is being poured out upon you. In the name of Jesus, just simply say, I receive. Woo! We honor the Lord. We honor the Lord. He is a mighty God. 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 We welcome you again to Impact Church Goldsboro. We thank God for those of you who are in the building, and we thank God for you, for those of you who are literally in the building with us by way of the spirit and by way of the broadcast. We appreciate you. We honor you. We welcome you to Impact Church Goldsboro, where God is doing some amazing things, where he is building and raising up a people who will be anointed and equipped to impact their city, their world, their family. I believe even nations will be impacted with what God is doing in you. I decree and declare that what is being done in you right now will be experienced by many and by many others who will encounter your person and encounter what God has put in you. It shall be revealed in the name of Jesus. We welcome Impact Chat Church Global. We thank you for joining. For those of you who are definitely joining us by way of uh, Facebook, we ask that you share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. We we're in, a, we're in an amazing series, and we're talking about living up on an open heaven. And I don't know about you, but I have been experiencing the glory of God. The presence of God has been pouring out. And so before you take your seats in this place, once again, give God a thunderous praise in this place. Give God a praise. We praise God for Apostle Catherine leading us. 
into our time of worship and prayer. We thank God for Pastor Tim even assisting and helping to create an atmosphere. Man, what an amazing move of God. Listen, we know that uh, God is able to do exceeding and abundant, but we also uh, co-laborers with him. And I believe that as we do our part, first of all, believing and trusting him, they that come to him must first believe and believe that he is a rewarder. How many know God is a rewarder? And that means he wants to reward you. He wants to reward you. And I believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, that diligently seek him through prayer, through worship, who diligently seek him through his word. And I believe God is pouring out even now the blessing and the reward of those who seek him. So we're excited. Listen, oh man, I'm going to try to catch and just calm down. I'm so caught up in the spirit right now. I feel such a powerful spirit of prophecy, a spirit of just praise, a spirit of worship, a spirit of expectation a spirit of renewing and refreshing all of that I feel it being released upon us and I receive it in the name of Jesus again we have been in an amazing series hope you have been enjoying it hope you have been blessed by it we're going to continue today and we're going to talk about some things that's really going to help you understand how to keep those heavens open and how to continue to live up under an open heaven and you have to understand that what God is doing and what God is saying even prophetically that literally there is something that God has in mind I believe beyond just today and just beyond this series that he desires to do and he desires to release and he desires to come into fruition in your life and I believe that God desires to even bring people and nations even uh, that you will encounter and that you will literally uh, be able to touch and remember we say nations we're not just talking about countries we're talking about people and people even from other countries and nations but the world that you live in and the people that you touch every person you touch is a type is a symbol type of a nation that they're connected to someone else and I believe that God is doing something in you that's going to move and touch the nations for his glory and I believe it's going to usher in revival for many and I'm excited about it if you would in your Bibles let's go to the book of Genesis love to go to the book of beginnings and we're excited about what God is saying and doing and today we want to continue we want to talk and teach today from the uh, just the mindset and the understanding of the atmosphere of an open heaven now atmosphere Atmosphere, the atmosphere of an open heaven. It is so important for us to understand that God desires to create an atmosphere and the atmosphere that he desires to create, literally, he will open the heavens and he will cause that atmosphere to experience his glory, his power. It will experience and you will experience his, his I'm talking about his uh, manifested, his Shekinah glory will rest in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is literally a, a, a surrounding a particular surrounding in the earth or over the earth or upon the planet. And many times when we talk about atmosphere, it's not always physical. It's not always geographical. The first atmosphere that God wants to affect in your life is the atmosphere of your mind. One of the ways that we must understand to keep the heavens open uh, literally over your life and to live, to dwell up under an open heaven, literally you must understand that the atmosphere of your mind must be that of glory, that of heaven, that of God. Keep your mind stayed on him. Keep your mind stayed on heaven. And remember we taught and we talked about literally that you have a connection in heaven. God, who we pray to, Jesus told his disciples to pray to the God or pray to God the Father which art in heaven. So you have a connection in heaven. So when you keep your mind stayed on him, literally you're keeping your mind in a heavenly place. We also taught you last week that you were seated in heavenly places, so you have a right to be there. And you have representation there, but you also have an inheritance there. You now have your name written there, and so heaven recognizes you. And so literally as you keep your mind stayed on heaven, you will experience heaven. Woo! See, what you keep your mind on is what you experience. And many times we, 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 we're challenged because the battle is literally for the mind. What the scripture teaches in Romans chapter 12, that literally Satan is constantly trying to blind the mind, trying to keep the mind from literally being conscious and cognizant of the glory of God to the point where you keep your mind on 
things that are, are, are beneath, things that are below. We are to set our affections on things that are above. But what the enemy wants to do is keep your mind on your struggles, keep your mind on your past, keep your mind on your pain, keep your mind in a state of fear. But if you can concentrate and keep your mind on these things, the Bible says, which will keep you, I'm literally saying he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on these things which are honest, pure, and of a good report. Keep your mind in heaven. Come on, somebody shout, elevate your mind. Come on, if you want to change your life, you're going to have to change your mind. Come on, you're going you're gonna to have to change your mind to change your life. Many people want to change in their life, but they don't understand we must change our mind. And so when we talk about the atmosphere of heaven, living up under an open heaven, it demands that you keep a mind, an open-minded, heavenly-minded, if you will, mentality, so heaven can continue to flow and exist in the atmosphere of your mind. And where he is, hell can't stay. Oh, I'm teaching good already. Where God is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So if I keep him on my mind, I'm going to stay free in my mind, regardless to what I see in my life. You cannot be bound if you keep your mind stayed on heaven. You will be tried, but you will not be bound. Come on. If you keep your mind stayed on him, that is the goal of life. I know everybody has goals. Everybody has something that we're trying to achieve. But we must, I'm talking about really make it our focal point. What did Jesus say in Matthew 6? That literally the priority of the believer is to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Woo! That's your priority. That's your priority before your business. That's your priority before all of the things that you desire to accomplish. And I decree and declare that if you keep your mind on him and seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, what does he say in Matthew 6? If you do this, he said, I will add. See, when you keep your mind on heaven, heaven will keep its mind on you and will begin to work for you. And you don't have to work so hard. Oh, God, I feel the glory of God. You don't have to toil. Part of what Jesus did when he came and redeemed us, he broke the curse of toiling also. Because when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, the Bible said that, let's look at Genesis chapter 1. I feel this in my spirit, Lord. I feel it as they say down in Mashanana. <laughs> Woo! Down in Mashanana. That's down in the city of my soul. I'm telling you, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to read this because this is so important, because this is what gives us also the very fundamental foundation understanding that Jesus came and established his kingdom, his glory, his domain. But remember, he established it in the earth, but he established it through you. So it is our responsibility to maintain the heavens in the earth. Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we are the heaven connection. We are how God desires to exist in the earth through his people. We are his representation. We are his people. He did not come to start a religion. He did not come to start a denomination. He came and he established a kingdom. We are not just Christians. As a matter of fact, I'm not a Christian. I am a son of God. Christianity is a religion. Come on here. But we serve a God who established a kingdom. Now there is not, I'm not against Christianity, but Christianity is something that has basically taken a religious, if you will, turn and it, is, it cannot bring you power to dominate in the earth. If you want to dominate Dominate in the earth, you must become a kingdom son of God. You must understand that Yahweh is our father, and he are, he's establishing sons. Sons, that sons, it, it's, it's including sons and daughters. He is establishing sons. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And he also said, I came that you might become sons of God, that you might receive your true identity, your true self, true self, your God self, sons of God. I dare you to start calling yourself a son of God and watch hell get nervous with you because hell get nervous. Hell ain't scared of you saying you a Christian. Hell is afraid of you saying you a son of God. Hell ain't scared of you saying I'm a Christian because everybody's a Christian. Come on here. But everybody's not a son because in order to be a son, according to Romans chapter number 8, you must have the Holy Ghost. 
And everybody ain't got the Holy Ghost. Woo! Everybody don't have the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry. Everybody know the Bible, but everybody don't know the language of heaven. God, I thank you. Everybody don't have the language of heaven. And so he said in this 26th verse of Genesis, and I need you to understand this because we got to embrace the truth of this matter. Only the truth is going to make you free. And the truth is Jesus came to restore the kingdom. This is why when he came, he would say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, heaven is now accessing the earth again. Woo! There is now an open heaven in the earth because now the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he was really referencing the fact that God in me is working through me as I am embodied in this earth, in this human body. Heaven is working through me. Glory to God. And so when you show up at work, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And God has access to start revival right at your workplace. But you got to have God consciousness. See, God can't move and we can't, you know, heaven can't access the earth if you got a religious Christian mentality because then you waiting on Sunday to get back to church to wait on the move of God. But when you know you are a kingdom son of God, heaven can be accessed. I'm talking about at the mall. Wherever you're at the gas station, come on here. Revival can break out. Heaven can break out. Wherever you are, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus was so bold that even when they said, show us the Father, he said, if you have seen me, you looking at him. Come on here. Heaven is here through me. And you got to get bold enough and take on the audacity of God and begin to identify yourself with him. Woo! Don't identify yourself with just religion or with religion, period. Start identifying yourself as a son of God. This is what got Jesus crucified, which was the purpose of God. And God knew they were going to crucify him, not because they just didn't like him. They didn't like the fact that he identified himself with the Father. How dare you say you're the bread of life? How dare you say you are the son of God? How dare you say that if you've seen me, you've seen him? How dare you say that you are above Abraham, that you could put an ax to Abraham? Come on, that is our spiritual father. But what they didn't know, they were talking to heaven. They were talking to God. Woo! That's why the Bible says what you've done unto the least of them, you, you attacked heaven. Understand the scripture says that we are ambassadors. And if you understand anything about government and the government that literally sends out ambassadors, when an ambassador of the United States of America is sent to any foreign country, any time in that foreign country that the ambassador is attacked, America is attacked. <laughs> Woo! You are an ambassador. In other words, you in the earth, but you're not of the earth. Heaven now is your home. Glory to God. You are a son of God. You come from heaven. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You are here, but not of this world. That's why you don't get caught up in all this stuff. Why? Because literally the scripture says that we ought to be transformed, changed by how we think, the renewing of our mind. This is how we're transformed and we're no longer reduced and we're no longer subject to the pettiness of the social, if you will, this earthly mindset and ways. Woo! I'm preaching right. And so when somebody touch you, they touch heaven. That's why God says if you mess with the least of mine, it's just like you may as well tie a millstone around your neck. You ought to send out some memos and say, y'all better leave me alone. Come on, you you looking for somebody to back you up and heaven got your back. Come on here. You looking for somebody to back you up and heaven said, I got your back. Come on here. Those that talk about you talking about me. Those that mess with you mess with me. If you do the least to mine, if you do something to the least to mine, he said, you've done it unto me. You ain't got to be no preacher. You ain't got to be no prophet. Come on, I know the Bible says, touch not my prophets, or touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. But understand, you are his. You are his, and you are his anointed. And that means you too. Come on, that ain't just for prophets. That ain't just for apostles. Come on here, some of y'all stop talking about preachers, but you're still talking about each other. And God says, that's why you ain't getting the breakthrough you deserve, because you're still messing with me. Because if, if you mess with your brother, you're messing with your father. 
That's why I learned I ain't gonna talk about nobody. I ain't putting my mouth on nobody. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what you think about it. Come on, some people don't have very much if you will regard for who you are and your person. But if they understood that you are embodying the, I'm talking about glory. You are carrying glory. You are glory carrier. You are carrying the anointing of God. You can mess around and open your mouth and give a praise and shake the foundation of hell and folk can get delivered. I'm talking about you. You ain't got to have no title. All you got to do is just be somebody who understands that I am a son of God. I carry the anointing. Jesus is in me through the Holy Ghost. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is not only liberty, but there is power. I don't care what row you sit on. I don't care where you sit at in church. I don't care if you don't have an office in the church. I don't care if you don't have a title in the church. If you are a born-again believer, we have been called to raise you up to give hell a fit in the earth. You are anointed to give hell a fit. You can go home and tell hell, you're going to have to loose my house. You're going you're gonna to have to loose my children. You need to open your mouth and let heaven out. Stop calling somebody talking about pray for me and open your mouth and let heaven out of your mouth. I'm not saying that we're not supposed to team up. We pray one for another. We are to pray one for another. We are to work together. But we got to first get everybody to know and understand you have glory in you. You have power in you. You got to carry the atmosphere of heaven in your mind so you can see it in your life. I ain't got time for somebody to answer the phone. These devils that I, I be fighting, they are, they are too aggressive. I ain't got time to try to call nobody down and say, let's go on a three-day fast. I got to realize that I have present power in me right now. Woo! I got present power. Come on, Patches, I got present power. Come on, come on, come on. What did he say? He's a present help. We ain't in the time of trouble. I ain't got time to call nobody. Open my mouth and say, devil, get behind me. I rebuke you, devil. In the name of Jesus. Come on, it's getting urgent now. Come on here. These demons that's been released, come on here. These demons, come on, somebody. It's getting urgent. These demons are bold. These demons are quoting scripture with you. Come on, somebody. You're going to have to do a little bit more than quote scripture. Now it's time to pull the trigger, baby. Now it's time to let them know I got power too. See, I can not only quote scripture, but I can cast your hind part out. I can command you because heaven is in my mouth. And what you don't realize that God is using you and what hell understands that when they hear, even you speak, they hear in heaven. This is what he did in the book of Genesis, Genesis 1 and 26. I got to read it because I took you there. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have basilia. Let them have authority. Let them have rule. Let them do in the earth as we do and as we are in heaven. And so whatever they establish is in the earth, heaven is going to back it up. Dominion, kingdom. He established a nation in the earth. Through Adam and Eve, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Now get this, in his own image and in the image of God created he him, male and female, created he, he them. And then he blessed them. He blessed them. Come on here. You ain't got to wait to get something to be blessed. You were blessed even when God created you. He said you are blessed. And what the the enemy likes to do is reduce our thinking and reduce our mentality and reduce our own self image and our own self if you will worth he don't want us to see ourselves as blessed we waiting to get somewhere get something waiting to accomplish something you got to realize you were created in the image of God and just the mere fact that you are now sons of God now understand that this is what he did in the beginning this is what he did even before sin contaminated if you will the earth through man this is what God did so this is also what Jesus came and restored. Through salvation, we have been brought back to this place to where we have dominion. Glory to God. We have dominion. We just got to elevate the atmosphere of our mind. And this is why we need deliverance because a stronghold is any ideology, any teaching, any doctrine, any thought, anything that causes you not to see yourself and you think on that thing to make you short of the glory of God. 
And what we got to do is come all the way up in his glory. And what Jesus did that makes it so powerful, even from what God did here in the earth, Jesus said, I'm going to do it, and I know you have been born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and you now walk with this carnal nature that you're going to have to bring under subjection. But what I did on the cross through my blood, I have given you the authority to now be put back into a place of dominion, even with your shortcomings. God. Oh, mighty knows. Even with your attitude sometimes. Even when sometimes you don't cross the T's and dot the I's. He said, my blood got you. My blood's got you. I am the propitiation of your sins. I am constantly advocating. And what I did that's quite different than what was done in the garden. This is what causes Satan to be upset because he know we have mercy and grace with the Father. He knows that God is so good that even when you ain't always right, he ain't going to take and strip your authority and the devil knows you still got authority over him even though you messed up yesterday. That's why he said there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus because my blood is covering them until they get themselves together. And this is why sin is so dangerous because sin is what separates us from God. But God has, listen, he done made, this is a whole new covenant. He done made a covenant and said, listen, you can't, you can't separate yourself from me now. I'm married to you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But what sin does is make you nervous in his presence. And therefore now we run from the presence of God when we are not doing right. We start to think, well, man, I ain't God. Can I tell you, even when we don't do everything right, you don't lose power. But it doesn't give you permission to do wrong because you still got power because really sin, what sin does is reduce your ability to stay in the atmosphere of heaven. If you study how sin works, what sin does is it causes you not to even want to worship because of the guilt that comes on your flesh. And what you got to do is you got to rebuke the spirit of guilt and say, I bind the spirit of guilt. I've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And even if I've made a mistake, even if I've fallen, woo, even if my foot almost slipped, I can get back up and dust myself off and get back in my place because I serve a God who has made provision for my sin. Woo. Thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. Come on, the person you sitting beside might not show it to you, but heaven will. Come on, somebody, and tell them I live for heaven's approval anyway because I ain't worried about you know how. Come on, somebody. I don't need your permission to be powerful. I don't need your permission to dominate. Come on here, and we're going to have to work together so sooner or later we're going to realize that we got this thing. Come on, look at somebody and say, we got this thing. Woo! No devil in hell got no authority over you, no power over you. And this is what Jesus did. He came and he redeemed us, redeemed. He brought us back into the place where God had originally intended for you to be. This is who you are. See, religion teaches you what you can't and what you shouldn't do and what you should. But what the kingdom does is teaches you first who you are. Be, know, and then do. Woo! The kingdom teaches you to be who you're supposed to be for. The kingdom empowers. Powers you. It causes you to get up from that place of, of, of just feeling sorry and, and being sick and tired and rise up in the authority of who you really are and understand that you are a king and a priest unto God. Oh, I feel revelation there. He made you kings and priests unto him. So he, he didn't, he did not ask nobody's permission. He didn't ask if you needed to get 10 folk to agree. You are a son of God. You are a king. And you have to understand as a king, you have been given a Authority to decree and to declare. And when kings decree and declare everything that is in their, if you will, sphere of influence, that means heaven. What you decree and declare now is set in motion. That's why he says in Matthew 16, I'm giving you authority. I'm giving you kings and whatsoever you bind, whatsoever you loose. Let's go back to Genesis. He told Adam, listen, I've given you dominion. So now whatever you name stuff, it's going to be the name of it. Heaven is going to name it what you name it. I found out a lot of stuff is not happening in your house because you ain't open your mouth. Yes, you got folk praying for you, but heaven is saying, I'm waiting on you. Your authority. You bring healing into your house. Bring peace. Open your mouth and command the heavens in your house to say peace resides here. Come on here. Prosperity resides here because I found out he who can name a thing controls a thing. 
And so if you got somebody else naming your peace, they probably controlling your peace. But if you can name your own peace, that's why you don't let nobody name you. That's why, that's why you don't let nobody name you. This is why Adam named everything because he was over everything. Whew. Don't let nobody call you anything. Don't let nobody name you. Come on here. The America can't name me. Come on, I'm not just a black American. I'm not just African. I know my color. Let me help some of you Negroes out who get so caught up. I'm a son of God. That's why I'm not controlled by all of the emotions of this world. Heaven controls me. And that's why people got problems with you when you become kingdom because they can't control you anymore. Once you become a son of God and you get your own mind and it's established in heaven, folk get nervous with you because they can't tell you what you should be and tell you how you should worship and tell you what you should say and tell you how you should go about doing. You understand how and the Holy Spirit reveals to you who you are and heaven shows you the constitution of its country and the citizenship that you now live by is not dominated by some denomination not dominated by some religion not dominated by Christianity where you gotta just do this and you can't do that oh y'all ain't preaching with me now because I'm messing with your idols hey Shana woo but we are coming into a season where the sons of God must manifest in the earth because the earth is groaning and waiting for the sons of God to discover who they are so that heaven can be experienced in the earth it's not just a conference it's a reality heaven on earth let it be done on earth as it is in heaven that's a reality that's not just the name of a conference that's an everyday reality where God says I want heaven to be experienced on the earth come on religion teaches you to get right so you can experience heaven and heaven tells you to become who you're supposed to be so you and the earth can experience heaven you ain't got to wait to get to heaven to experience heaven come on here you are supposed to bring the heavens into the earth when Jesus came he brought heaven with him and he reestablished it in the earth and it is now our assignment to establish heaven in the earth to bring men into the saving knowledge of the son of God that they too might become sons of God and literally teach them to walk in the spirit of God and how to bring the heavens into the earth. Woo. <laughs> and I don't even want to get into eschatology, but even in the end, I mean, we're going to listen, listen, we're going to dominate rule. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Let's keep going. So look at this. He gave him dominion and understand when you live up on an open heaven, it's easy. It's easier. It doesn't mean you're not going to be tried. It doesn't mean you're not going to be tried. Now, it's always intriguing to me when I study Genesis. When you have a, a kingdom mindset, a heavenly mindset, when you have the mentality and you have the atmosphere of God in your mind, literally what intrigued me about God creating Adam and Eve, and I, I, I know Paul said to us not to be ignorant of the devices of Satan. Therefore, we shouldn't be ignorant of our adversary, but it intrigues me that when you understand who you are, you don't have a lot of concern about your enemy. Oh, I'm preaching good. When you know who you are and you're conscious of the fact that God is in me, I have the authority of God, and all of hell is, get this, subject to me. I don't worry what's subject to me. I must stay in my place and position of authority, and it must be concerned about me. Now, let me give you my point because if you study Genesis and in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, you find that even as God uh, created Adam and Eve, he did not have a special day where he sat and taught and warned them about anything in the earth that was over them. In other words, he didn't have a class on a Satan uh, adversary called Satan out there. He did not teach Adam and Eve. That listen, I want to let y'all know, I kicked out Lucifer. He's in the earth. And I need y'all to be careful with him. Because what God understood and what God understands is if you just stay in the place where I have created you, he, you will find out who he is, but you won't have to worry about him. And you won't have to have all these special sessions on him. 
Now, that, that's not negating. We need deliverance. Why? Because we have to learn how to stand in our authority, walk in our authority. We must, again, know and understand the enemy and how he works because Satan has not changed his game one bit, saints. He's working the same thing. He's constantly trying to get you to go against what God said. He's constantly trying to convince you you don't need God. This is what he did with Adam and Eve. He convinced them to believe a lie. They were created in his image and his likeness, clear and plain. He created them and blessed them. It was done. But Satan came and asked them, literally, do you think God told you everything? But here's the deal. What God didn't tell you, this is what Lucifer did, and I'm paraphrasing. What he didn't tell you was is that you really ain't like him. But if you want to be like him, eat from this tree, and you're going to be just like him. Now, what they failed to realize was they were created in his image and his likeness. Image meaning they were created in the image of God. They were just as, as God is a spirit. They had the ability, even in their, in their original state before sin, they had physical bodies because literally he went from the dust and created them, but he gave them the ability to do now as we have the ability to operate as spirit-speaking beings. They had the ability and they were basically created as dual agents at creation. They were created with the authority to stand in heaven as Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit was representing them they were also represented in heaven by and through the trinity or through the triune god and literally god was represented in the earth through man but he know that anybody who's going to live in the earth they must have an earth suit so i got to give you a body that's why the devil is after your mind your body he wants to get control of your mind because satan knows i cannot raise hell in the earth unless i have somebody that's why you need to check everybody around you tell them no i do devil checks on everybody honey because i know the only way the devil can can get to me he's got to have somebody and so don't go use the how long we've been friends talking about the devil ain't using me if you understand the spirit realm you understand that there is no spirit that can i mean literally be effective in the earth with perpetuating its will even hell cannot perpetuate its will without folk worshiping and availing themselves to hell and there are some people who line up with hell just to, just, listen, if you don't think hell can't give you some stuff, hell tried to offer Jesus what was already his. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you this. And there's some folk who literally did what Jesus didn't do. I believe some folk are bowing down, worshiping Satan, and they may be getting some stuff, but you still going to catch it when you run up against heaven. I hope I ain't going too deep today, Apostle C. Hope I'm not going too deep, but you got to understand your representation. You listen, you if you're gonna keep the heavens open, you don't keep the heavens open with religion. Jesus taught that religion shuts the heavens up. He told the scribes and Pharisees, He said, You are the reason why heaven ain't open. Your traditions, it's the traditions of men that closes up the heaven. Even doubt, familiarity. He couldn't open the heavens over his own home because they said he was Mary and Joseph's son. They did not receive his anointing and didn't receive him as he was and is the son of God. And so he could not open the heavens. Come on. And there are places you're going to go. And he even taught us that there are going to be places that you ain't going to be able to open the heavens for because they're going to just see you as, you know, you know, from their experience. And the Bible says, no, no man after the flesh. But people are going to reduce you to their familiarity with you. They're going to remember you from a particular place in your past and et cetera. But that's okay. If they don't want the heavens open, shake the dust. I'm looking for somebody. I'm looking for cities. I'm looking for people. I'm looking for nations who says I want the heavens open and I want to experience the glory of God. And therefore, you got to even be willing sometimes to shake the dust. But you have a responsibility to represent him in the earth. And so therefore, even as you are representing, 
represented in heaven, you represent heaven in the earth. And so now whatever comes out of your mouth and whatever comes out of you that literally you uh, allow to come through you for God, literally it's going to be so because God has given you authority and dominion, but you can't reduce your thinking as if you don't need God. Satan convinced Adam and Eve you can do this without God. You can do it without God. And they disobeyed the word of the Lord. Woo! One of the ways that the heavens will shut up on you is through disobedience. Oh, man. And that's so personal, guys. And this is what religion does. Religion will basically make you take all of your personal conviction and try to put it on the whole church. God told you to take off pants. Leave everybody else alone. I mean, whatever he speaks to you. I mean, sometimes we'll take something and make a whole movement out of it. We got to learn to keep the heavens open. And what you also have to learn is that heaven is using all of us, and he doesn't use us the same. Doesn't use the same. And what we'll do is if you ain't doing it the way I do it, we'll come up against the heavens over you because you ain't doing it. Now, this is how you're supposed to be doing it. Listen, do you know God is bigger than what he's shown you? God is bigger than what he's shown you. And this is the problem with man's uh, religion and denominations because denominations said this is how you do Sunday. This is how you do worship. Y'all ain't doing it right. And they'll come right up. And you have people who literally, we got to stop this. We got to stop saying what God ain't using. All because they're not doing it our way. We got to stop saying that God ain't in that church because he only in that church because I know heaven is in that church. No, heaven is everywhere. Can I tell you, God is all over. God is everywhere. And what we got to do is grow up and mature and understand that we serve a God who is represented in every single believer. Every single person has some type of, if you will, uh, image. We walk and we stand in the image of God. And listen, all of us are different. We have different thumbprints or fingerprints. Literally, all of us represent heaven, but none of us are the same. Same, which says the diversity there needs to be quiet churches because everybody can't stand a loud church and there needs to be some loud churches because some of us can't stand quiet churches but whatever we need we need to make sure that the glory of God is there and leave people to what they are hearing God say as long as the heavens are open because you got folk jumping and shouting and still ain't getting delivered come on here oh y'all ain't gonna say nothing and then you got some folk who just sitting quiet and singing hymns and not getting delivered you gotta find where your deliverance is at you gotta find where you can hear the voice of God. You got to find where God is challenging you to come into who he has called you to be. You got to get somewhere where heaven is waking up what heaven put in you. Come on, somebody. You got to get somewhere where heaven knows how to develop what God has put in you. You got to stop sitting in houses where you basically being loyal to the family's pedigree. And you got to go, and we got to get caught up. got to get out of this thing, getting caught up with folk leaving. Can I tell you, I'm going to train some of you for a season and God going to pull you out and say, I now need to send you over here. But see, we are kingdom. We understand you can't go nowhere and I not be there. We are one everywhere we go. Yeah. Woo. Religion fight over members. Come on here. Religious leaders fight over members. You are of Paul and you are of this. Ah, listen, if you had that, what did a man say? If you got to go, you got to go. Now, I'm going to tell you what I hear. I'm going to tell you what I see. We're going to do this thing right. But I've learned that God will position you and he will transition you when and how he needs to move and wake up what he put in you. Come on here. There are some things that I may not be graced to wake up in some folk. And then there are some preachers that's not graced to wake up prophets. But then there are some of us who are graced to disturb the prophetic noise in you. And every time you come in here, you feel like, nah, 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 nah. the bubbly, the knobby starts to move in you. And you want to say something. You, whoo, you want, whoo something in me. Come on, you got to know that I got to get up onto somebody who can train the excellence in me. I got to get somebody who can help me understand how to operate and how to identify the gifts of the Spirit. Every Sunday morning when we come in here, we ought to come in here, create an atmosphere. We ought not to come in here and put on no show. It ain't about singing three songs and trying to get folk their favorite song. It's about dis dis stirring up the heavens so that we can wake up the gifts in the body and somebody begin to speak with a word of wisdom somebody begin to give a word of knowledge somebody wake up the prophetic somebody has to move in the gift of miracles where are the gifts of the spirit and the reason why we don't see the supernatural is because we are still stuck in the religious 
When you open the heavens, you open what heaven put in you. Woo! Heavens are open. Heavens are open. And one reason we, we, it's tough today, because we too structured. <laughs> we can't hardly open the heavens in church services today. Why? Because we ain't got but 90 minutes. Because 90 minutes is how the world says, present it to the world. But when Jesus was in service, literally, they disturbed the service to the point where one man said, listen, I believe heaven is up in there. And they tore the ceiling off. You do that today, you're going to jail. We want what they had in the Bible, but we want to stay connected to what people are going to feel comfortable with today. And people are so comfortable, they can't even get heaven. Why? Because you can't keep them here longer than 90 minutes. Why? Because they've been told they can't sit that long, but they'll go home and sit in front of the TV and watch a two and a half hour movie and won't move. But then I come and try to convince somebody they hungry for God. Use a hungry lie. You ain't hungry for God. If you were hungry for God, you would sit and wait until he show up. There were times in the Bible where they just sat until the spirit moved. We live in a busy society and society has our mind. Society is dictating our services. Oh, yes, we call it the anointing because that's the thing you got to call it. Why? Because we want people to be convinced that it's the anointing. But you know when it's the anointing. Why? Because something in you that's not like God will be destroyed. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. And we sit in 90-minute structured televised worship services and lead with the same hell in our heart. And then go back home and fight and fuss on social media and talk about each other. And other. Come on, God says, I'm bringing deliverance. Come on. Oh, it's time for the apostolic anointing to rise. Come on here. And you ain't got to sit here with us all day, and we ain't going to be here all day. But one thing we are not going to do is reduce ourselves <laughs> to satisfy what folk really, you know, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Ah, let me get off that because, you know, I might be upsetting some of my team. Well, possibly we want to stay attractive. Come on, if you ain't attracted to the anointing, then move on. Come on, somebody. We trying to stay attractive, and the folk that we're attracting, they ain't listen. Ah, Jesus, come on, Newsom, get focused, because I feel a different anointing. Come on, the anointing ought to track. If you hungry for God, come on here. What we are hungry for is to be a part of something that make us look good. Come on here. We are hungry to be a part of something that's going to fit our image. We are in an image-driven society. And if it doesn't fit my image, I can't go over there because they are too, oh, they too, they too wild. They, they be shucking and bucking and speaking in tongues. I need to be somewhere uh, where, you know, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. Cause remember, everybody's got to be somewhere. But don't talk about the shucks and the bucks, right? And let's not talk about those who are even, you know, popular and quiet. You know, that's fine. Listen, I ain't going to put my mouth on you. Keep yours off me, right? But what I'm after is the glory of God. And what I got to do is do what it takes to provoke the heavens to show up here i need something broken in me i need some deliverance and come on you got to know that when you are up under the anointing of god it will disturb everything in you that's not like god and when you're in a church that doesn't disturb that's that hell that sin and that thing that is not like god in you what makes it comfortable you're in a dangerous place somebody ought to preach that dangerous places and most of the time it's places where you're comfortable places where you can still do what you want but nothing is preached to bring conviction to your heart. You don't have the type of anointing that can produce conviction where men say, what must I do? Come on. When we come back to a place where we can experience the altar, we need to see altar calls. We need to see people laying on the altars. We need to see for, yes, help me, God. grateful that I'm to a point in my life where the Holy Ghost will check me. Come on somebody. Where I don't have to wait to get caught in my sins, but the Holy Ghost will say go ahead and confess them. Oh, I'm grateful. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm grateful that I don't have to wait until it falls apart and everything collapses, but before and the Holy Ghost say, you see where this is going. I see where it's going, but it's struggle, God. But the Holy Ghost said, give it up now. Before it all falls down. Woo! Mm, yes, I, glory to God. <laughs> you got to get somewhere where the Holy Spirit can begin to move you again. I ain't studying the devil. I got to stop. Oh, 
heavens are open. We were made for the glory of God. We were made to carry the glory. We were made to be the type of people that God has called us to be. One of the reasons why they really could not handle Jesus, he was eccentric according to their day. He didn't do things the way they did it. He did not conform. He came and he upset everything that was comfortable. And then he comforted everything that was upset. They talked about him because he ate with sinners and, and publicans. Come on, some of y'all won't be caught with a sinner. We hang around the light. We won't even take light to dark places. Why? Because we're afraid of what they're going to say about us. And we're like Nicodemus. We're trying to get people saved on the sly. We're coming by night. But God says, I need some of you to get bold. I need you to understand that I call you to be light. I, I put you on a hill that, that sits on a hill, light that sits on a hill that cannot be hid. Because I came to light up the world. The world was dark, and it, it was dark. And the Bible says it was dark. And Jesus brought light. Behold, the light, the Lamb of God, which lighteth up the whole world. Glory to God. We want to be with people who are going to make us look good, but we, we don't want to be around folk who don't have anything to add to us. We don't want to befriend people who ain't got anything to help us platform to the next place. Why? Because we are platform strategists. We'll connect with folk who can get me to my next. And God says, there's somebody you bypass trying to get to your next. I sent you to Samaria, but you allowed your rules to block you from going. Can I tell you, God will go out of bounds to get folk. Oh, sometimes God will send you where you will be talked about just to win the woman at the well. Aren't you glad you were that woman at the well? Aren't you glad somebody went out of bounds? Somebody said, forget religion. I'm going to talk to them anyway. Aren't you glad that you did not conform to their rules and now somebody can say, I'm saved because you weren't afraid to be talked about? I'm telling you, God will go out of bounds to get you. Whew. I'm so glad that God will break rules. Man's rules, that is. He didn't sin. He didn't sin. He don't have to sin to save you. You don't have to sin to win sinners. But one thing Jesus taught us, even when his scribes and Pharisees recognized that the man is in Samaria, and not only is in Samaria, he's at the well talking to a Samaritan woman, and he's a Jew. You're not supposed to do that. Some of you, you are following the rules just right, and you can't get anything done for heaven. Because God didn't make those rules. <laughs> Bishop made them rules. Bishop told you you couldn't do it. Bishop said don't be seen over there. Bishop said I better not catch you over there. Bishop said you better not bring that language back here. And you can't even speak in tongues because Bishop said tongues ain't to be talked over here. Uh-oh, I'm messing up. Pastor, I know you're praying for me. I got to stop. To my bringing heaven. See, I know this is a, man, this is a bold, strong word. But can I tell you, this is how you get heaven into the earth. You got to break some of this stuff. You got to break tradition. Jesus did not bring redemption by following the rules of the synagogue, by following the rules of the scribes and the Pharisees. Why? Because he knew the scribes and the Pharisees never took up the rules and the, the, the principles of the kingdom. He said, this is why the kingdom of heaven is shut up, because you all have all these rules, and yet you won't even, I mean, you can't even bust a grape yourself but yet you keep men from experiencing the kingdom and experiencing heaven because of your ways. Oh, I'm teaching right. Last scripture, and we're going home on this one today. John 17 and 22. Turn there very quickly. Woo! Jesus. Some of you basically, God, you got to get comfortable being different. You're trying to conform so people will like your ministry. You don't like the way you teach. You don't like how you sound. God says, listen, it's your sound that I have authentically given you that is going to be heard by those who need to hear it. You do not have to basically, you know, you don't have to preach like everybody else. Come on. One of the things, I love homiletics. I love homiletics. I love the art of preaching. I'm not against it. But what we must be careful with is we teach people to basically present the gospel entertainingly. 
and we invest more in our homiletics than the message and the, the, the conduit that we need to be to bring God in. And so what the black church especially is addicted to is the entertainment of the church style. And God messed it up in 2020. He said, I'm going to break. Listen, everything that could be shaken got shook last year. Only thing didn't move was the kingdom. Kingdom stayed in place. The kingdom stayed intact. Church got shook. Religion got shook. Come on here. Popularity got crushed. Couldn't have no conferences. Won't nobody packing them in nowhere last year. Whew. And literally, we have taught people to be attracted to how we preach and the style of preaching and the art of preaching. And people begin to enjoy how we do what we do. And they begin to hear God based on how it sounds. And they get caught up in the style, but never experience the God of the kingdom. Yeah, y'all right there should be saying, come on now. Because that's about when they start to feel the emotions and they start feeling good about Sunday because they've been going through hell all week and uh, feels mighty good. And I'm not preaching against preaching, uh, but I'm advocating about what are we really doing? Because I can hear God through that. I love good preaching. Sometimes I pray and wish I could preach that way, but I was never trained that way. But you got to get comfortable with your style. And I told you earlier, God is moving in that style. There are people who bring in heaven in through proper homiletics and good preaching style. I have and I know some of my favorite preachers can preach your head off and heaven will come and sit right down with you and hug you and deliver you. So it's not about the style. It is about the why, the who. God, I want you to come in, however you do it. And my point to you is, however you do it, just bring the glory in. Don't try to do it like nobody else. Do it the way he gave it to you. Do it how he told you. And don't, 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 don't shake or don't uh, 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 shun nobody who don't do it like you. But just make sure you're being authentic to bring the glory in. Look at John uh, 17 and 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. However he gives you the glory, however he glorifies himself through you, however you sing, however you preach, however However you teach, learn how to master what God has given you. Develop and cultivate your gift. Get better at it. But be you because God is using all of us. Come on, look at somebody and say, God is using all of us. And the thing about it is he's using us. He's not using all of us in this platform or in this setting. But when you leave here, God wants to glorify himself through you. Look at what he says again. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. What are you giving people? What are you giving? in the world. I don't care how you talk about it. Some of you are gifted to sit one-on-one -on -one with people and just talk to them about the Bible. Some of you will never hit a pulpit. But if you would just continue to open your mouth and sit over a cup of coffee, you are anointed to tell your story. You are anointed to listen to people and help them come out of situations by just being there for them. You ain't trying to be like Apostle Catherine. You don't want to start another women's ministry. You just want to do your part. You ain't trying to be like Apostle E. You're not trying to uh, be a pastor of this, but you just want to do your part. God, however you want to use me, let me bring the heavens into the earth. Let me glorify you. Let the heavens be opened by, by how you have given it to me. I want to give it to them. Some of you are anointed with your smile. Some of you are anointed with your personality. That's right. We were talking about Pastor Winnie is anointed personality. She sucks you in with her personality. She can talk to anybody and almost make them feel like they are family in 10 minutes. That's an anointing. And Jesus said, what you giving to me? 
thou hast gave us me, I have given to them that they may be one even as we are one. That they may be one. That list, Listen, literally, this to me is like revival. That they may be one. That we are all now coming into the, the, the oneness of whom God has called us to be. I believe that as we open the heavens, even through how God and what God has given to us, our ministry gifts, even here at Impact, even as we continue to, to reassemble every gift that God has put in you, I'm looking for every gift to be stirred. I'm looking for God to begin to stir and to begin to move, stir up the gift that's in you and begin to cultivate and develop so we can experience the whole body of Christ, the entire body of Christ, where literally every gift that is awakened now is, is is awakened is trained and cultivated and now manifesting come on you all stand to your feet come on stand to your feet give him glory come on god is waking up i feel that god is waking up the heaven that he placed in you and he is waking it up for a purpose destiny is being awakened heavens are being open Woo! jesus i feel glory Heavens are being open. The heavens are being open. Come on, just begin to worship him right where you are. Come on, begin to worship him right where you are. Oh, I feel this. The heavens are being open right now. Come on, the heavens are opening over you right now. Come on, the heavens are opening up right now. The heavens are opening up right now. Heavens are open. Fire is falling. Come on, come on, just worship him all over the building. Worship him. Worship him all over the building. Heaven's open. Na, 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 so Heaven's open. Some of you, you think you're just saved, and you don't think there's anything else other than the fact that you're just saved. God says, I have put in every one of you a gift. Ephesians tells us to cultivate and develop and thoroughly equip the believers for the work of ministry. The work of ministry is not just confined to just church itself, but everywhere you go, in your home, in your family, on your jobs, in society, in the marketplaces, I believe that God is still penetrating even if you will, the spears of society, government. I believe that there are those who are being raised up for government who are kingdom citizens. I believe kingdom citizens are being raised up to begin to move into medical and uh, in, in the medical field and even in the medical sphere. I believe that some are going into entertainment. I believe that some are going into education. All of us are connected to family and some of you are trained and you're raised up as Levites for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that God is raising up the kingdom of God to begin to manifest in every sphere destiny is being awakened purposes are being discovered and one thing I want you to leave here today with is that the atmosphere of your mind as you stay and keep your mind stayed on the heavens and stayed on God that God will begin to reveal to you gifts and graces God will begin to reveal to you when where and how to manifest and how he desires to manifest the kingdom of heaven how he desires to manifest in the earth through you and some of you some of you there's a compelling to even share and to talk and tell your testimony and share your story and to talk about the good news of God but the enemy continues to make you afraid the enemy continues to bring you into a place where you feel like that's that's not something that you can do God has called all of us to be witnesses he said to be a witness unto him into in Jerusalem and into all the other most parts of the world I decree and declare today that some of you are being delivered from the shame of talking and the shame of sharing. Some of you, you feel like you just don't have the anointing to talk about it. The same way you talk about anything, God says, I want you to open your mouth and let me come out. Tell them of the goodness of God. Ah, I'm challenging some of you this week. I'm challenging you to open your spirit up to allow the Holy Ghost to lead you and just to lead you into conversation about him. Sometimes you just want to do it, but you get afraid. I break the spirit of fear off of you now I break the spirit of fear off of you now I break the spirit of fear off of you now the only ministry is not evangelism prophecy teaching and pastoring and the apostolic there's ministry I call everyday ministry some of you feel like you're not called because you're not called to an office or called to a particular grace but God says I have called you to be a witness I've called you to be a light I've called you to tell and to send forth and to release my praise everywhere you go and I'm not talking about releasing hallelujah in the break 
break room. I'm talking about talk about the goodness of God. When you praise God, you speak well of him. See, the church taught us the only way to praise God is to shout hallelujah. But no, you praise God when you speak well of him. When you are at work and you tell people, do you all have I told y'all how good God is? We serve a good father. Some of you are going to be anointed to talk about the goodness of God. Some of you, you're going to be anointed to reach those who are lost. I even hear the Lord saying that I'm getting ready to raise some of you up and some of you are going to be attracted to people that other folk will not even talk to. But God says, I've anointed you to do so. Some of you have the gift to just literally connecting with people and you have the ability to walk up to strangers and start conversations and they will listen to you. God says, I'm going to anoint you and I'm going to cause you to be anointed to even know when, where, and who. Yes, wisdom must rule because we're in a unique day and time. Careful how you approach strangers. Careful how you talk to people. But God says even, uh, Pastor Linda, I'm getting ready to raise up new teams. I'm going to send people out. Literally, I'm going to have people connecting that have different gifts. Somebody's going to have the gift to be able to connect. Then you're going to connect the, 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 those who have the gift of gab and connecting and talking. God says, I'm going to connect you with an apostolic prophetic gift that when you go out two by two, you'll be able to connect with people. And then you're going to have some who have the gift of prophecy. And right there on the street, you'll be able to minister to people sensitive areas of their life where only they know God knows because they didn't share they don't know you and God says listen I'm going to bring prophecy not just in the church but I'm going to take prophecy to the streets I'm going to take prophecy to the streets I hear the Lord saying I'm going to cause revivals to break out at cookouts where literally you may be when we start gathering again and when people start assembling again that literally the spirit of the Lord is going to move and I hear God saying this do not be afraid to disturb the status is quo of wherever you are. Sometimes we're so sensitive that we don't want to be quote unquote look like oh y'all religious but there are going to be some breakouts in places uh, and you're going to have to have the boldness. I remember times when God put on me and, and, and he really forced it on me but I was at work and people would come to me and wanted to pray and I'm like now in the middle of the warehouse and the brother's like yes now pray for me and he put his head down and threw his hands up and I'm standing there like now? People are riding by on forklifts and the workplace is going forth. And I'm like, you know, trying to be cute. So I just basically touched him and real quiet. He said, no, nah, man, I need that real prayer. He said, I need that real prayer. And 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 he he noticed I was praying real quiet. And he don't started, how y'all not about so he started speaking in tongues, getting loud, hallelujah. So I said, Well, if he going, I may as well go with him. Can I tell you, wherever people need God, we need to show up and be there. It was not by chance that that woman was at the well. Jesus knew she was going to be there. And he went there for her. Some of you are getting ready to go to the well. Some of you are going to be anointed to go out of bounds. You ain't going to worry about how people talk about you. You don't care about how they say you hang around them. You know who they are. And they're not going to be winning you. You're going to be winning them. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm ready. Father, I thank you. Wake up the glory. Wake up the glory. Wake up the heavens. Wake up everything that you placed in us, everything that you put in us. Lead and guide us. Give us the understanding of your ways and give us the understanding of your will. Help us to follow your way and your word, Father, in everything we do. I pray today that you will continue to stir every gift, every gift that's in your people. And I decree and declare that the heavens are open. We live in an open heaven. We live up under an open heaven. But we live that heaven might manifest itself and that you might bring your glory and we might bring the glory of your presence into the earth. Use us, Father. Lead and guide us. God, let revival break out in us. Let revival. I pray right now that you're waking up revivalists. The Samuels. Those who can hear you those who can hear you, those who hear your voice, bring revival in the earth. Stir the Elijahs. Stir the Elijah. Let Deborah wake up, oh God. Wake up the Estes. Stir up the Peters. Let the Peter, Paul, James, and Johns be stirred. Father, stir us and then send us. Stir us Equip us and send us in the name of Jesus. Somebody give him glory. This is our prayer.
This is our prayer. The heavens are open. We decree and declare that the heavens are open. Come on, just do that for me. Stir the heavens. Everywhere you go, I decree and declare that everywhere your feet shall find themselves, that whatever God wants to do, we're going to close this thing out. We're going to help you understand the benefit of allowing heaven to be open through you. Because see, when heaven comes and manifests and you bring the glory of God in, you're not just being a blessing where you are, you're being blessed. There is an inheritance for you. I feel that in my spirit, that God says you will receive the inheritance of heaven in the earth. Some of you getting ready to receive prosperity like you've never seen it before. Because one thing about living up on an open heaven, you live up on everything that heaven has done for you and everything that heaven has provided for you is manifested up on an open heaven. In the book of Genesis, before man fell, before Adam and Eve fell, the Bible said God caused everything to grow. It had not even rained. Didn't have to have rain to vegetate the, 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 the vegetation of the earth because they were living up on an open heaven. And some of you, you're up on an open heaven and the windows of heaven are going to open to you even as you continue to trust God and believe God. Listen, give him praise today. What amazing word. Thank you for your patience. We're getting ready to sow and see. Come on, we're getting ready to sow and see. We're getting ready to open the heaven with our tithe. Come on, we're getting ready to open the heaven with our offering. We're getting ready to open the heaven with our tithe and our offering because the heavens open even through your giving. Come on, as you prepare to give, as you prepare to bring your tithe and your offering today, remember that the heavens open even when you give. The Bible says that if you would bring the tithe and the offering, and right where you are, if you already have your tithe and your offering, you can bring it to the front. For those of you who are watching by Facebook, we ask that you would basically uh, just go to our website, even uh, just uh, on the screen. They may put on the screen uh, how you can tithe and how you can give. You can text to give. You can uh, actually, you can go to the website and give by way of the website and, 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 and you can literally give online. But we appreciate every gift, every seed. We appreciate every tithe that we decree and declare that the heavens are open over you because of your tithe. We decree and declare that as you give your offering that the rain of God falls on your field, on your, on your job, on your careers, on your businesses. Woo! How many of you are excited? I'm excited. Keep my mind stayed on heaven. Adam and Eve had a, they had a God mentality. When they were created, they were created with a kingdom mentality. Kingdom mentality. Strong word today, but it was a powerful word. I call it a big boy word right there. Big boy word. I believe we're going to experience God like never before as we continue to reassemble and bring the church back into, amen, what we call whatever that new norm is. But as we come back, even as we continue to come back to worship, we invite those of you who are by way of the broadcast as you continue to find it in your, uh, in your, in your, I guess you say conviction as well as in your comfort to join us. We are still practicing social distancing. We're wearing masks. We are socially distant. But we invite you to come and be a part of our in person worship if that's something that you are led and compelled to do so we invite you to come and assemble I'm telling you if you're not here at 930 you really need to get here there's such a powerful presence that takes place in our worship and what we call worship now we call it just a time of creating space for God to come in and move and we worship and we praise and the prophetic singers and uh, our prophets Apostle Catherine and Pastor Dia and even Pastor Tim they just be creating an atmosphere the spirit of prophecy many times begin to move and I'm telling you there's nothing like experiencing that core corporate experience in this place together. But we invite you to be a part of that. We continue to encourage you to share our broadcast, even if you're not comfortable or not in a place where you can return back to the house of worship. Continue to stay tuned in. God is doing some amazing things right here at Impact, and we thank you for your support. We thank you for your liberal giving, and we decree and declare that the Lord is going to bless you. He's going to bless you, and that the windows of heaven are now open for you. For those of you who have tithed, and those of you who are tithing, we encourage you to give that offering so that your fields can be blessed also with the reign of God and we appreciate you guys so much listen we love you tune in even on Wednesday where we are also doing Bible class we're teaching and that is right now 
completely virtual. We're doing that virtual. We're basically doing that through our uh, social media platform. So we want you to tune in as well as share that broadcast. We love you. We appreciate you. We appreciate what God is doing even in this place. Impact Church Global. Listen, you may be of a distance. You may be in a different state. You may be in a different country. Wherever you are tuning in to us, we certainly appreciate you tuning in. We want you to stay tuned. Go to our website. Stay connected to when and where we are basically uh, doing our broadcast and stay with us. Be a part of our global family because truly we believe that God is raising up a powerful people to impact nations all over this globe and that includes you as well. Listen, nothing else to keep us. Listen, remember as you leave today, we're still socially distanced, so give air hugs. Give air hugs, those air bear hugs. Uh, fist bump, point, wave. Tell somebody I see you. Until next week, God bless you and we love you is our prayer.